Illinois faces some big challenges. Today, we're about to hear a truly honest analysis of the problems we face. Equally as important, you'll also hear an in-depth discussion of some practical solutions. This is your radio source for stories, the insight, and the answers you won't hear anywhere else. Not in the media and not coming from Springfield. You're listening to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Now, here's your host, AM 560's Dan Proft. Good afternoon, Dan Proft, and I am joined by John Tillman, who's the president and CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute on this edition of Illinois Rising. And uh, John, some uh, eventful occurrences over the holidays. Maybe some people uh, didn't take notice because they were focused on their family and enjoying the holidays as they should be. One of them, little Lisa Madigan, our attorney general. Uh, daughter is, of is that a height joke or a stature joke? It's, uh, you know, daddy's little girl joke. I got it. That's, you know, it's the uh, verbal version of a Stantis <laughs> cartoon. Uh, so Lisa Madigan issues a Christmas Eve opinion that uh, the fantasy uh, websites FanDuel and DraftKings constitute illegal online gambling in the state of Illinois. She followed the New York example, as so many Chicago Democrats do, whatever New York Democrats do, Ed Burke or Lisa Madigan is sure to follow suit. Uh, saying uh, illegal online gambling. So buying lottery tickets online, not a problem. Uh, Going to the state-subsidized horse uh, tracks, please do. Uh, Going to a video poker parlor uh, that's state-sponsored. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. The difference, you know. Productive game of chance. All those have the state getting their fig. That's true. (laughs) That is true. That is the difference. That is the difference. Uh, so if you don't pay tribute to the Illinois kingpins, you can't do business here. That seems to be the message. Although it was interesting, Lisa Madigan kind of backed off. I mean, she issued this opinion, but she didn't seem to have much verve in prosecuting the case. Nevertheless, it's created a chilling effect for DraftKings and FanDuel, and they have turned around and said they would file suit against Lisa Madigan you know, I mean, you know, but as the representative of the state government. Uh, per her, her opinion. Well, for more on the, the legal aspects of this, we're now joined by Jeff Schaub, who is an attorney with the Liberty Justice Center, affiliated with the Illinois Policy Institute. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So uh, give us the kind of a layman's version of the legal opinion rendered by Lisa Madigan and where this matter goes legally from here. Okay, well, um, so in response to to request from two legislators, I believe uh, Scott Drury was one of them, and um, oh. L.G. Sims was the other. Uh, on December 23rd, Lisa Madigan issued an opinion on daily fantasy sports and whether under the Illinois Criminal Co- Code those daily fantasy sports constitute illegal gambling. And she decided that they do because the way that the Illinois Criminal Code defines gambling is that it prohibits playing any game of chance or skill for money unless otherwise exempted. So, unless otherwise exempted, an important phrase. It's a huge. It's a really important phrase. So and big, because big, big, big net. Let's catch everybody and then come to us so that we may exempt you. And some campaign contributions during the process would be helpful to your exemption. Well, I, there, there may be some of that going on, and, and uh, of course, the state itself operates a game of chance called the lottery, <laughs> and that is exempted under the criminal code. Yeah, well, you can't win if you don't play. Jeff, I do have a, a personal uh, question. I've been playing uh, fantasy baseball since 1986, a multiple champion, finished in third place this year. And oh, we do, boy. Congratulations. We do, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I was in last place the year before, so this is actually a big rise. Nice for turnaround. Me. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice uh, turnaround. Let's see if you oh, can lure Theo Epstein away from the Cubs. <laughs> I, I've been pretty bad the last few years. Uh, but uh, we exchange money, and uh, there are winnings. Uh, will you defend me in a court of law should uh, charges be brought uh, I, well, I don't know about that, but uh, it, it does seem like the opinion is broad enough to encompass those kind of office or family and friend uh, pools or fantasy uh, games, which I think a lot of people play. Um, daily fantasy sports, which seem to be the, the subject of the opinion, uh, are, is, is sort of an up-and-coming uh, way to play fantasy sports, but it's one that Illinois apparently has 
uh, one of the highest uh, number of people playing fantasy sport or daily fantasy sports in the nation. Yeah, interesting. Uh, if after uh, this opinion by Lisa Madigan, uh, FanDuel and DraftKings put out a map of the state of Illinois with little pinpoints where all the video poker parlors are. These state-sponsored arcade centers that are just uh, that are just gambling that just have gambling machines in them, the video poker machines. I mean, it literally turned the entire state of Illinois red because every pin prick was a red a dot on the map. So the state, uh, of course, is deeply involved in sanctioning gambling at racetracks and casinos and online and through the lottery, as you suggested, and video poker machines. So how do, do you walk the line between all of those forms of gambling and DraftKings and FanDuel. It seems to me that's where a lot of people are confused, the apparent hypocrisy of uh, Attorney General Tom Hagen. Well, yeah, well, the, you know, the problem is that the law is, is, is actually pretty clear. It just it prohibits any game of chance or skill for money, but then it just has all these exceptions. And how do you get an exception? Well, you've got to know... A legislature and and they've got to believe you know you maybe you got to lobby them and uh, and you say you know why I got this great gambling business it would be great for Illinois because people really want to play it and uh, you know and that's the way that the law works which you know if you no matter what your view is on gambling if you if you think gambling is is a terrible scourge then you should be against this form of of, uh, of exemptionism and if you think that gambling's okay, then you should still be against this form of exemptionism because it, it just gives out special favors to certain businesses. Jeff, this goes to exactly to a point Dan made in a piece he wrote, uh, I think it was last week, uh, on the cartel. This is just another example of how the cartel works. Why don't you connect the dots on that? Again? Well, I mean, the Illinois cartel economy, it used to be that uh, this government or politicians play the middleman, and people look at this, oh, you come in and you give campaign contributions to public officials or in Chicago and Illinois, you can more formally just bribe them uh, and hope that you don't get caught. But it really is different now. It's not uh, it's not outside interests leveraging the government for special treatment so they can create this space for themselves. It's the government cutting out those special interests and being the kingpins themselves. They're the ones doing gambling. They're the ones doing drugs, medical marijuana, and we know where that's going. Uh, full legalization a la Colorado and Washington State at some point because it's just about cash for the state, cash for them to distribute to protect their position as a member of the Illinois political ruling class. So it's really important for people to see this. It's not just fan duel and uh, DraftKings having to make campaign contributions. It's, ha- it's them having to cut in the Illinois ruling class or cut it out. Right. Every time somebody pops up, with uh, citizens pop up with some new creative idea, Uber, whatever you want to pick, uh, Airbnb, and of course now uh, this uh, particular kind of um, uh, fantasy sports, it, the government doesn't want people to have exchanges with one another voluntarily that the government doesn't have a piece of. And that is really, really insidious to the whole concept of liberty. And we've had now a, a kind of a footnote a, a per what you were saying, Jeff, about uh, legislation to create another exemption. Well, that's what State Representative Mike Zalewski uh, from the south side of Chicago has uh, has done. He's introduced legislation uh, with the ostensible purpose of creating yet another exemption for DraftKings and FanDuel. Yeah, and uh, you know, on on that point, it, it, the the legislation is good in that it legalizes uh, what now Lisa Madigan says is illegal. Um, so that's good, but. Um, the 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 bill itself has a, has a lot of uh, puts a lot of more regulation on fantasy sports and uh, and their operators and and there's a lot of problems with that. One is that it just it's going to stifle innovation. So fantasy sports is about five or so years old, and it, it obviously comes it's an innovation uh, in in the fantasy uh, sports arena. The daily fantasy sports didn't exist. 10 years ago, and then somebody came up with an idea, hey, we can do fantasy sports on a daily basis instead of a seasonal basis. Uh, and, and so that was, that was created, and a lot of people got interested in it and, and uh, participate now. But we don't know what is going to happen in the future. Somebody else might come, with, come out with a different innovation about fantasy sports, and it could evolve. But the way that the legislation is, it's, so, it's 
it acts like fantasy sports and daily fantasy sports are always going to exist the way that they exist now. And so it, it, it will stifle uh, that potential innovation. He is Jeff Schwab. He's an attorney with the Liberty Justice Center, affiliated with the Illinois Policy, Policy Institute. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us and uh, providing your insights. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.